Ian, welcome. T thanks for taking the time to do this interview. Thank you for having me. I know you're, uh, you're knee deep in launch procedures. I like to think neck deep, but knee deep will be fine. Okay. What, what is Azubu? Azubu. Azubu 2.0. That's the, the first thing I want to make clear. Azubu 2.0 is different from anything that you've heard about Azubu today. Azubu 2.0 is the reboot of a premium streaming platform focused on esports. Okay. And what are you trying to do? Uh, what I hope that we'll be successful in doing. Um, and obviously there's a, a long road ahead of us, um, but what I hope that we'll be successful in doing is really bringing to life all of the potential that there is in esports. Esports is sitting today on, perhaps it's just gone past a tipping point. It really is now uh, a fully fledged global phenomenon with millions of people who are engaged, who are passionate, who are uh, just, just desperate to make it part of their lifestyle. And so what we want to do with Azubu is to continue to build upon what has been set into motion by people like Riot Games, by people like uh, Twitch, by people like MLG, by people like uh, Blizzard. All of, the, all of the great minds who have uh, inspired so many people in the past few years, we want to continue that path and we want to inspire the esportsmen of generations to come. Okay. As, a, as an esports fan, what can I expect to find on a Subaru 2.0? Good question. Um, I would hope that you can find anything that you want about esports. We want to make a Zubu 2.0 a, a, a daily destination for everything esports. We want the best talent, the best broadcasters, the best entertainers, and we want them to be 24 seven available to the public. We want to bring that best broadcast talent from everywhere around the world, from up and coming markets like Brazil, from Oceania, and established places like North America and Europe. We also want to reach out to China and Asia. Uh, we talk about internally, we talk about being the Silk Road. Uh, we talk about a fusion of East and West and bringing out that great content from Asia into North American markets. So that's one thing, the, the great broadcasts from around the world. We also want to make sure that we are delivering the very best of scripted content. Um, and so by that I mean perhaps you guys have got some exclusives that you can give to us. Perhaps there's things that we can co-produce together. Perhaps um, you'll see more ESGN content on our site. And then the third bucket is all around continuing where we've been successful up until today, which is broadcasting LCS, working with publisher partners to bring their global tournaments to life with pixel perfect clarity. As an esports streamer, what can I expect to find on Azubu 2.0? As an esports streamer, we very much hope that we are providing a really great experience from... We say that Azubu 2.0 is talent first. Um, so the broadcasters, the streamers, should feel that at any given time, they have access to Azubu stuff, that they can phone up Azubu 24-7, they can instant message Azubu 24-7, and they can uh, have a suite of technicians or a suite of customer service reps helping make sure that they deliver the most perfect stream that they can. But more than that, what we want Azubu 2.0 to be is something where those broadcasters, that talent, have a seat at the table in defining what Azubu 2.1, Azubu 2.2, and the continuing iterations of the site will be. When we say talent first, that means that they get to design the perfect feature set, the perfect roadmap, the perfect ethos for what a streaming site should be. Um, that means an element of transparency into the back end. That means an element of 
understanding how their revenue is generated. It means that they can help us talk about the feature set and the technology implementation that they feel will benefit them. Uh, and I think that that is something that is resonating with esportsmen um, and with esports broadcasters. And it's, it's become something of a pledge of ours. We are happy to work with anyone who wants to improve esports broadcasting and we will take their ideas and we will add them to our roadmap and hopefully we'll deliver upon that and hopefully we will deliver an experience that is like a tailor-made suit for esports. 24-hour live support. How many people are there in Azubu 2.0? Uh, Azubu 2.0 is in a process of, of, of renewing itself and of growing. Um, one of the things that we often hear from the community is that uh, it's a Korean company. Now, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm, I'm not Korean. Are you sure? Um, it would be a very good disguise. Um, I've practiced the accent for a while. <laughs> um, uh, Azubu's actually made up of a, of a whole bunch of people of different nationalities. We are a truly global company trying to deliver a global solution for a global phenomenon. Uh, I actually have um, uh, on staff about 20% uh, uh, are Canadians now. I'm if sorry. You look at the, if, you, yeah, sure. if you look at the world population, um, actually something like 1% of people are Canadian, so I'm, I'm punching 20 times above my weight. Uh, there are still a few Koreans with the organization. We feel that um, they have a special place because eSports, the crucible of eSports, is always going to be Korea. They have a special insight um, and they have some great talent out there. So Korea is always going to be part of it, but there is a, a global workforce uh, approaching around 50 people. Now your question was, how do you deliver 24-7 support? That's, that's not necessarily done by that same 50 people. We've got some great account managers, um, account managers who uh, the community will know, people like Tricia Sugita, uh, Megumi Mixbear. Uh, she's, she's a streamer herself, and so she's able to give very uh, personal, tailored, and empathetic support to people. Um, but the, the technical support is done by uh, a range of people from our good partners, Brightcove, who are in a strategic alliance with us to, to build out that roadmap that I talked about, and also from various low-cost centers where we have uh, people who are able to man the phones 24-7 based in places outside of the, of the US. So uh, we've, we've been... We've been very concerned about having a, a sensible cost structure for this business so that we can sustain it going forward. And so we've made the, the, the choices to blend an operational support offering. Sometimes it will be people like Tricia, sometimes it will be more technical people from Brightcove, and sometimes it will be people in these low cost centers who help monitor the stream and troubleshoot at any given time. You just got a check for, I think it was 34, million dollars and some change. How are you going to spend that money? So first of all, I wish it were a check. Um, if I had received a check for 35 or so million dollars, then I would be a very happy man and you might not ever see me again. Um, what Azubu has is the backing of a private investment group called Sapinda, who have uh, made available to us funding over a period of time to the tune of, it's actually in euros, 25 million euros or thereabouts, and when you translate it into dollars, um, because of the exchange rate, it goes up to 35 and sounds even bigger. Um, what we're going to do with that money is deliver on what I said at the beginning, which is we want to inspire the dreams of esportsmen. We want to deliver something that the community can be proud of, that the community can engage with, that the broadcasters can feel that they're a part of. And to do so on a global basis takes a lot of resources. To have operations in various territories, to have the 
the great technology solution that we have all costs money. So it's an investment. It's an investment in the future of esports. I like to talk about, and I referenced this in a, in a recent press release that we did with you, I like to talk about growing the pie. I like to regard this money as helping deliver a great apple pie of esports, if you'll excuse the metaphor. But it's an apple pie that we can all, hopefully, take a slice of in improving the world of esports with this money. I hope that it improves everyone's experience and ability to enjoy esports. So what are you going to use the money for? Okay, so like I just said, um, some of it goes into global operations, some of it goes into staffing, some of it goes into doubling down on those areas that we just talked about here. It's in incredibly important to have a good customer service, incredibly important to make the talent first approach resonate and to do that we have to have the right people uh, and the right resources to empower them to travel and have dinner and talk through problems and troubleshoot and all of those kind of things. So doubling down on account management is somewhere we're going, where we're going to spend the money. Um, that global technology infrastructure and building out that roadmap that the talent are saying to us that they want. I'll give you an example. Um, we, we've worked very well with Riot over the past months. We've mm -hmm. broadcast uh, WC3 to, to great effect. I think that we got, by the end of the final there in October the 4th, we had something like a 25% audience share against people like YouTube and Twitch. Um, and that was, that was all based around word of mouth. It was based around the quality of the stream and the fact that you can watch it anywhere. Uh, and the fact that you can watch it on any device, that is important as well. Uh, our technology provider um, delivers us all kinds of whistles and bells that are patent protected that enable us to stream on, on a range of different uh, devices. So um, the reason why I tell that story I'm talking about Riot is because Riot have got a wish list of things that they would like to see in a premium platform that caters for their broadcast needs. Uh, and so what we've got um, with uh, our team working with Brightcove is we've made sure that Riot's requests for the perfect esports experience are on our roadmap. So Azubu 2.0 is coming any day now. Uh, it will be there for everyone to get their hands on it. And hopefully what you'll see over the coming months is where we spend that money is investing in incremental weekly improvements, building out new features, building out new uh, technologies, building out new ways of broadcasting that benefit Riot, that benefit the viewer, that benefit the talent. Um, and I think that you know, that is a significant enterprise. Everyone, everyone watching this should bear in mind that um, Delivering that global platform for a global phenomena takes time and it takes money, but we've got a great plan and I hope that we can deliver against that plan. The, the, the check that you talk about will certainly help us do so quicker than if there were no money in the bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As Super 2.0 will happen any day and what I understand from you is that uh, that's not where this ends, there's the Super 2.1 and 2.2. Um, at what point do you think the Super Platform will reach a point where you're happy with it? Is that the day you go live for 2.0 or...? Uh, no, if I, were, if I were ever happy with the Azubu Platform, then I could, I could retire. It's not in my nature, it's not in the nature of the team that I've assembled to, to ever be happy. We have to strive to improve things on a daily basis. Um, good example of, uh, of what you'll see on day one and then what you'll see shortly thereafter. Um, so day one is the initial design and it comes with a rebrand because we want to put some of the old Azubu behind us. Um, and it's got a good user interface. But what we've done behind the scenes is we've sat down with some broadcasters, we've sat down with some esports fans, some fanatics 
Um, and we've said, um, you know, what would you do to improve this? What do you want to see? And uh, it's things like that, user, user experience labs and improving the design. A-B testing might be something that some of your, uh, your viewers are, are familiar with. Just working out what fits the audience best. If you're making a tailor-made suit, you have to take measurements. You have to uh, trim the collar, so to speak. Um, and so that's, that's what we'll be doing. We will be constantly improving um, and, uh, and learning from what we put out into the marketplace and taking feedback. There's, uh, there's an old Google adage. Um, you know, they, they, they're quite happy for 90% of the things that they release to be a mistake because you learn from the mistake and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So um, a Zubu 2.0 will be a good step forward, certainly a better step forward than the Zubu has had in the past. Um, but uh, going forward, we'll be striving to add excellence to it every day. And one, one thing that I would say to the community is that we welcome your feedback. We would love for you to contact me and say, I would like to see this. I would like to do this. This is a platform that is designed for eSports and we will happily listen to any constructive feedback. And I know that you're a man who likes to give direct feedback, so we're quite happy to listen to even negative feedback if it's done in the, in the, in the right kind of way. I have no idea of which you speak now. Um, Twitch, MLG TV, Daily Motion, Hitbox, and my guess is probably five more that will pop up because there is someone who has success in the space, so these things happen, and the Subo 2.x. Um, this will, get a, this will become really crowded. Do you think that will be a problem? I think the competition is the essence of the human experience. It's the reason why we, as a race, have evolved. It's the reason why businesses evolve, certainly. I think that um, a monopoly isn't a good situation for anybody. I think that the consumers, I think that the publishers want choice. And then it's up to us, uh, Azubu, and the Azubu leadership team, to deliver on the clear potential that there is in the marketplace. The reason why there are all of these people swimming into this sea is because we have reached a tipping point. We've reached a tipping point where broadcast behavior is different, where broadcast consumption is different, where technology is, a, is an enabler, and where the publishers, excuse me, I spent five years working with EA, and I saw this transformation from putting a package good on a shelf to being, a, uh, being all about digital entertainment. I saw that happen before my very eyes and I saw a great big monolith like EA pivot slowly um, to, to embrace it, but embrace it they have. And all of the publishers like EA, like Activision, now understand that community is paramount, that these brand advocates, the people playing their game competitively is a great thing for their brand. So we've got technology tipping point, we've got uh, uh, sociological tipping points, and of course, people who are entrepreneurial will see this space and go, well, we should be here. Uh, have they got the, uh, quite the checkbook that we have? Have they got quite the partnership with Bright Cove, one of the leading uh, OVPs on the planet? Uh, perhaps not. Perhaps they uh, don't have quite the suite of tools that we have assembled, but nevertheless, I wish all of them well because they're all going to be able to help us learn and again improve this space for the benefit of the community in general. Speaking of community, you, uh, you bring on board a lot of people from Leakpedia. Can you tell us about that? Sure, I can. Um, it's a great privilege and, uh, and an honor to have people like Matt Gunning, um, Jordan Spence. There's a whole range of them who have come across. Uh, it's a first wave. We hope to bring on board more talented, bright, passionate people who can really walk the talk of esports. Um, and there may well be people out there who think, I want a career in esports. I'm disciplined, I'm passionate, I, uh, impassioned, I'm, I'm 
organized and I feel that I have something to contribute and we would welcome resumes from those people as well. But in the specific case of, uh, of Matt Gunning and the Leakpedia crew, uh, when I took over Azubu, which was towards the end of August last year, uh, I was looking to find, find credible esports talent and splice the DNA of that talent with some older, wiser, more proven heads. And it's not to say that, that um, Gunning and his team aren't great and can't do a million things. Um, but I also want to just pair them with a range of professionals who have worked with me at EA, who have worked for Capcom, who have worked for Riot Games, who have worked for IBM, Microsoft, a range of different companies delivering multi-million dollar projects. Um, so in splicing the DNA and taking people on board, talented esports professionals like Gunning, like uh, Tricia, who I talked about, and bringing them together with uh, another group of individuals who have, again, walked the talk in the publisher or digital spheres, then I think that we've got a great team. Um, you know, Gunning, Gunning brings, and this goes back to your, your previous question, what can people expect to see on Azubu 2.0? The, the League, ex Leaguepedia team, I'm going to start calling them the Azubu team from now on. Um, what they bring to the table is that, that daily appointment to view, that I want to go to Azubu because they're going to have cool stuff. They're going to have stats. They're going to have authority. They bring us legitimacy, they bring us insight, they bring us uh, passion and polemic and debate. And all of those things we want to have on Azubu that surround the talent, that surround the broadcasters, and really bring them to life. So when Broadcaster X is uh, on Azubu, it's not just them broadcasting into the void. They're going to be surrounded not only by real-time chat, um, but stats that talk about their pedigree, articles and interviews that talk about their legacy, their accomplishments, their, their brand to come, why these people are you know, the, you know, the, the emergent Tiger Woods of a new space. And that's really what we're trying to get with the new Azubu team. This sounds like a major differentiation from the other broadcasting platforms out there. We hope that we have distinguished ourselves from some of the other platforms out there. We don't want to, you know, we, we, we're in the same space as people like Twitch and MLG. Are, the, are they direct competitors? Yeah, I don't think there's a head-on collision. Twitch is a platform that deals with uh, gamers in general across a range of different consoles and devices and genres. Um, our starting point is very much to focus on the talent, the broadcasters who drive esports, and to bring their brands to life. Such phenomenal things have happened in the past couple of years with esports, with teams uh, popping up out of nowhere, with personalities, with talent, with skills coming to the fore. And what we want to do is, is, is again, that, that Silk Road that I talked about, bring East and West together, show that there is this global phenomena, and help our broadcast partners develop their brands and their personalities and their entertainment abilities further. One thing that um, you might not know, I, I started off my career at IMG. Uh, IMG is the International Management Group. They represent people like the Nobel Foundation, uh, Tiger Woods, um, they represent the All England Lawn Tennis Association or Wimbledon. Um, lots of big sportsmen, lots of golfers. In actual fact, it started off when a guy called Mark McCormack, who was a lawyer, shook hands with Arnold Palmer and transformed sports from traditional sports from a gentleman's game into a billion dollar, multi billion dollar phenomena. And I think that's, that's what we also are striving to do here. Uh, is to surf that wave because esports has got that same potential right now, many years on from when sports went over uh, that tipping point. And so, you know, we want to like ride that roller coaster and uh, and 
have that transformative effect on an industry that IMG did. And so when, again, this, this, this goes back to what you were talking about, what can people expect from Azubu 2.0 and what can broadcasters expect, we want to work with them to improve their profile. We want to work with them to improve the narrative of what they broadcast. We want to work with them to put their name in lights and to put their name in lights globally. And I think that um, that, that is a point of differentiation. We are not just a place where you turn up and broadcast. We are a premium esports network where we want to invest in our talent and grow the pie together. Sapinta has invested in other companies than Azubu 2.0 and sure. Azubu. Um, Cloud, ESGM, Gem. Um, how, do, how do the companies work together? Let me start, if I may, by talking a little bit about Sapinda so that you can understand the ecosystem. Um, and that's a critical word to bear in mind because uh, there are links in the same way as that if we were in the jungle, there's a link between uh, the, the lion and the baboon. I'm um, not sure why I picked those two particular animals, but you know what I mean. They're, they're, they all play in the same space, but they aren't necessarily uh, hanging out together every day. If they did, they might eat each other. Um, I digress. The, the, the point is, is that Sapinda, who you may know if you've read in the, the press, I know there's an awful lot of rumours out there in the community about what Sapinda is. Sapinda is simply a group of high net worth individuals who run a private investment firm that makes investments into areas that they believe are going to be transformative, that they believe are going to have a return on investment by being transformative. And so if you go to their website or you look at any of the press that is out there, uh, they have uh, leading magnates from a wide range of industries, whether it's avionics, whether it's mining, whether it's technology, whether it's agriculture, they are making shrewd bets on emergent spaces and transformative technologies. Esports is one of those for the reasons that I talked about, for the fact that we are on this tipping point because of technology and because of uh, talent and because of the audience that's out there. So what Sapinda have done, as well as a range of other companies that are nothing to do with esports, they have invested in uh, global esports management, GEM. They've invested in Klauf, uh, which you know, also uh, the, the ESGN content, and they've invested in uh, Azubu as a platform. Now, um, your question was, how do all of these entities play together? Uh, and the simple answer is, is that they all represent different forays into this space. Now, if you were uh, an investor, you may well be, or you may well be a, a, a gambling man. Let's just take the metaphor of the roulette table. If you want to hedge your bets, then you place three chips on the table because you've got more chance of striking it lucky. There is something that is going to happen in esports. That's clear to everybody. Uh, everyone from Tencent and Riot to Blizzard through to yourselves and CBSI and the investment that you're making in esports. It's clear that there is something happening. Smart people are congregating around this space and Sapinda have chosen to make uh, separate investments that are clearly related um, but aren't in any way unified. We will occasionally have a telephone call, we'll compare our notes on the industry, we'll offer each other advice but we're separated by geography and we're separated by legal structures and we're separated by having a completely different set of investment criteria and goals. So uh, very different entities and it's clear, you know, and I know that there's lots of speculation about how all of these groups work together. Um, in the future, perhaps there is a way for them all to harmonize and for them to slingshot off of each other. Um, 
that time isn't now. Uh, for the time being, my focus is very much on Azubu 2.0 and delivering this premier destination that will hopefully hopefully do all the things we set out to do to, to grow that eSports pie and deliver something that eSports can be proud of. I think all the rumours that exist around Sapinda and all the weirdness of having someone that you don't really know who comes into the space and invests a lot of money into things that don't seem obvious and transparent, I think that's the root cause of the problem. Sure. Um, and I think Sapinda as a name has only been brought up, I think, in the last maybe three weeks. All of a sudden, you know, Gem went live and they said, we're funded by Sapinda. You were saying now that you were funded by Sapinda. I think one of the tactical mistakes that was made, honestly, was that that wasn't, here's what we would like to achieve with this. Yeah, maybe, but um, that presupposes a couple of things. It presupposes that all of these companies are interlinked, and it presupposes that um, Sapinda are in some way these Machiavellian puppet masters who you know, are doing this above my head and making me talk right now. Um, I, nothing could be further from the, from the truth. What um, Sapinda are is a private investment firm, and the key thing there is the word private, They're a group of private individuals. There's very few um, financiers or investment groups that are well known to their backers. You know, when I was at EA, I could see the register of shareholders, but I didn't know who they all were. Um, you know, Riot, they've got a big ownership, um, or they're majority owned by Tencent, right? No one knows all of those, the, the Chinese luminaries behind that. Uh, so Pinder see an opportunity for return on investment. They make investments in a range of different companies and then my job as the CEO of Azubu is to deliver that return on investment. It's me and my team that then go into the marketplace, that deliver a platform, that sign the contracts, that organize things. We are in operational control. So Pinda, um, we talk to in the same way as that any company would talk to a board. You say to them, this is where we are, this is what we're doing, this is what we need, this is what help we could do with, um, this is where your return on investment is coming. There's no operational day-to-day -day involvement because why, why would there be? That's the it's relationship between the people who give you money and say, please go on and give us a return on yeah. that money that we've put in there. Okay, my last question. If, um, if I was a streamer, slightly prettier than I am now, and I actually had a following of I people who like that me. that's possible. Um, why should I go to the super platform? I would welcome, and the Azubu team would welcome, professional and engaging broadcasters because we want, to, we want to harness your talent. We want to give you something back. We want to form a partnership with you so that you can capitalize on the global audience, so that you can improve your skill set, so that you can contribute to a platform and the, the design of a platform so that you can help us make you that tailor-made soup that will be snug and possibly smug, um, but it will be stylish and elegant. And that's really what we want to do. We want to hear what solutions you'd like to, to find. We'd like to hear about your problems and navigate through those. So if you were a broadcaster and you were coming to Azubu, then you know, that, that's, that's what we try and do. We sit down with everyone and we listen to them. We say, what do you need? What do you want to be successful? Here's how we think we can help. Here's some guidance that we have. Uh, here's some suggestions that we have. Here's the roadmap of technology that we have today. How do you want to contribute? So partnership is key. Let's improve esports together. I have some of the answers. I don't have all of the answers. And I welcome people giving me the answers or giving me their opinion so that I can integrate that into our plans. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much.